Good morning, everyone. We're back at the Innovation Stage next to the Innovation Hub. I would now like to introduce you to our next presenter, Michael Burns, who's the CEO of Global UAV Technologies. Michael's been involved in the mining and exploration industry since 2007. He was a founding member of McAvoy Geosciences, and in 2014, he co-founded Pioneer Exploration Consultants, a private geological consulting firm based in Saskatchewan. At Pioneer Exploration, Michael developed a UAV and MEG-TM system, flew the first ever commercial unmanned airborne magnetic geophysical survey in 2014, which is hard to believe. So that's, uh, that's amazing. And was central to Pioneer becoming the industry leader in UAV-based geophysical surveys. So please join me in welcoming Michael. Thanks. So it, it, it's uh, it's been a really interesting journey to get from starting a, a small consulting company in the downturn of the industry to uh, here today with some pretty novel technology at our fingertips. And uh, ten years ago, I had a magnetometer strapped on my back in the Yukon, trudging through snow in July, and feeling pretty good if we got about ten line kilometers of surveying done. Uh, today, we're able to fly up to 200 line kilometers of, of mag data with a drone, with a crew of two people. So it's a, it's a really phenomenal step in achievement over a really short period of time. Before I begin, uh, Global UAV Technologies is a publicly listed company um, on the CSE, and as such, there's just, there might be some forward-looking statements in this presentation um, as a disclaimer. So what is disruptive technology? It's a term that's used a lot now to describe uh, new innovation. Um, and it's an innovation that creates a new market and value and eventually disrupts an existing market and value network. So this can lead to the displacement of existing established products or services. So why is there a picture of a space shuttle on the screen? Well, if you look closely, you'll notice that this isn't the space shuttle that most of you are familiar with. This is the Russian space shuttle. And in 1988, on February 15th, almost 30 years ago today, it made its first flight. Uh, it launched into space, it orbited the Earth twice, and it returned and landed without a pilot on board. It was a completely autonomous flight, and it was the first of its kind ever achieved. Uh, the program was was defunded and unfortunately didn't progress, but it was years ahead of what was happening in the U.S. at the time. So, uh, the neat thing about this is that although it was really advanced technology, it wasn't accessible. So, autonomous flight at that point was you know restricted to governments and people with really deep pockets. Fast forward 30 years, and today you can buy a drone for around $100 at Best Buy, and it'll fly autonomously, capture real-time high-definition video and imagery, and it can all be controlled through your smartphone. So this mass accessibility to advanced technology has driven a surge in innovation. And right now we're in the middle of a rapidly evolving environment of new drone technology, new drone designs, uh, we're seeing increased payload and ranges of, of uh, UAV systems and also decreasing costs. There's new sensor technology, cameras, thermal sensors, LiDAR, uh, advanced imagery and geophysical sensor types that are increasing in sensitivity and, de and increasing in resolution while at the same time decreasing in cost and size. And businesses and companies are rapidly integrating drones into their workplaces and their workflows more and more every day. So this technology is, is you know, sweeping across the industry and it's being actually adopted. So it's not just a lot of hype at this stage. People are, are using it and getting a lot of value out of employing these, these uh, new tools. So drone technology has been really well adapted by the mining industry so far. Uh, the early advancement was in the collection of high-resolution ortho imagery and, uh, and aerial photos for mapping uh, digital elevation models of mine sites uh, and exploration properties, visual inspections of infrastructure and hazardous areas, 
So this image is a screenshot of a mine quarry with aerial image locations uh, indicated by the little green dots. And below that is a 3D surface model that was created from the imagery. And this can be done in a matter of hours or, or a day, depending on the size of the survey area. So you can actually go in and create a complete 3D model of your site within a very short time period. And this is a really powerful tool. Already, the majority of mining companies have integrated some of this technology into their survey departments. Uh, this is an example of a centimeter scale digital elevation model that was collected using a drone. It was comprised of uh, around 500 images and they're stitched together and processed through a photogrammetry software that produces a digital elevation model or a 3D point cloud. The advantages of using drones for this type of work include significant time and cost savings, manpower reduction, higher resolution, and better quality data. So there's also a safer working environment by being able to collect measurements from areas that previously uh, would have been difficult or dangerous to access on foot. So all of a sudden you can, get, you can get higher resolution data, but you can also get data from places that you previously couldn't before. The advances in drone technology have also spurred a payload sensor technology race. Sensor manufacturers that previously built LiDAR scanners, uh, geophysics sensors, multispectral cameras, hyperspectral cameras, they're all in a marketing push and a sales race to develop lightweight drone-specific sensor payloads. And uh, the drone-ready sensor payloads that are here today include LiDAR, um, like in the image uh, here, uh, as well as multi- and hyperspectral thermal imaging cameras, uh, gas detectors, geophysics sensors, there's a whole suite of them and there's new sensors every day that are coming onto the market. So it's a really exciting time. With these lightweight sensors, there's some really amazing solutions that have been developed for problems in the mining industry, such as how do you 3D scan an underground uh, working that's too dangerous to put people in and there's no access for ground-based equipment or rovers and that type of, of uh, solution that, that exists. So in this image there's actually a multi-copter drone flying underground uh, without any GPS obviously and uh, it has a LiDAR payload and a collision avoidance system that was developed in Australia. This drone can automatically fly and scan underground workings and avoid running into obstacles. So it'll essentially take off, you hit go, and it just does its thing and works its way down the underground workings and produces a 3D model so that the engineers can then assess what's going on in areas that you can't send a person to visually inspect. Other sensors include multi and hyperspectral cameras used for mapping and environmental baseline studies. Uh, as well as other applications like assessing vegetation growth and plant health for reclaimed ground. Uh, rather than meter scale resolution, uh, imagery produced with drone surveys is on the centimeter scale. So we're seeing an order of magnitude greater resolution in a lot of the data that we're collecting. In, uh, and, and that's powerful on a property scale uh, environment. And then we have the drone geophysics sensor payloads with uh, airborne mag surveys being the first to be uh, fairly widely adopted and gain a really good reputation of being able to deliver quality data that's uh, comparable or better than in some instances the industry standards of conventional airborne or ground-based methods that are being used. This is an image of a drone specific mag sensor that's built by Gem Systems and here it is attached to a, a multi-copter drone uh, in flight. So the data quality, the collection process, um, it's really seamless now. These systems are very easy to use, they're very accessible, the costs are quite low. So almost anyone today from prospectors to large mining companies can fly their own airborne geophysics and that, that all of a sudden this accessibility opens up a, a mass amount of uh, value in terms of what you can start adding to your exploration project. When you, when you bring a new survey method to market, uh, the data quality is critical and the mass adoption of the technology into the market is really dependent on that data quality. So 
this profile in particular is really useful in evaluating the data quality because a direct comparison can be made between four different, uh, four different mag survey methods um, over the same anomaly. So the, the pink line on the bottom, that was regional government airborne data that's flown at fairly high elevations and, and wide line spacings. Uh, along the exact line that that was flown, we did a drone survey, uh, a ground mag survey, and there's also a uh, high resolution airborne fixed wing survey flown. So the ground mag obviously has a lot higher signal. The conventional airborne, high resolution airborne survey and drone mag produced essentially similar results. They were both flown at the same altitudes. And this is a really good validation that the data that's being collected by drones actually compares to industry standards that are, that are you know, the other methods out there today. Sometimes clients are a little hesitant, although, to adopt new technology. So they want a survey flown over an area where they have existing data sets to be able to compare. In this example, we have a nice comparison of two data sets that were flown over a structurally controlled gold deposit in Saskatchewan. Both are total field maps, and on the right-hand side is the original airborne data set uh, that was acquired with a 50-meter line spacing. It was flown at around 50 to 60 meters above ground. I think it was a HeliMag survey that was done. The data on the left is from one of our UAV mag surveys. It was flown at 15 meter line spacing. So you have almost double the, uh, double the data or triple the data density and 25 meters altitude. So we're getting a lot structural resolution that you can pull off of a mag survey like this is really advantageous to exploration. Uh, so it was previously only achievable by ground methods and in this scenario it would have been during the winter time because there's lakes to cross, but we flew this survey, it was 550 line kilometers. We flew it in three days with a two-person crew. So that's, that's a pretty phenomenal collection rate for high resolution data with very little manpower and, uh, and a really innovative uh, technique. So where are we now in terms of UAV solutions in the exploration industry? Are they gaining credibility? Are we seeing the market adopt the technology uh, and continued innovation within the sector? And where are we headed from here? After three, four years of flying surveys throughout North America and across the world with drones, um, I can confidently say that we're just at the beginning, both in terms of the technology that we're using right now and also the market exposure and demand for UAV solutions. So, both of those are, are advancing really quickly. New companies are starting to adopt this technology and accept it, that it's, it's actually able to produce quality results uh, that in some cases are better than the conventional methods. Uh, and the true telling of a new technology's success in the market is a response and the industry demand for mag surveys. And these provide an indicator, I think, for the appetite, the appetite of innovation in the industry and, and new technologies. So since our first survey in 2014, we've flown around 10 to 15,000 line kilometers of survey using drones. Um, throughout North America and overseas, we're in five different countries right now, and our growth has tripled each year. So about 70% or so of the work comes from major mining companies, the remaining 30% is from juniors and, and private government uh, sectors. But there's a real, uh, there's a real acceptance of, of drone technology and drone survey methods right now in industry. So starting off with our first survey in 2014, uh, we're on track to complete over 20 surveys this year. And the UAV geophysics market globally was estimated to be worth about three to four million dollars in 2017, 2016. I think it's projected to be closer to 25 to 30 million dollars this year, uh, and growing. So it's just uh, you know part of that has to do with the with the status of the industry. There's a lot more, a uh, lot more companies that are active now than there were three years ago, but also the technology is getting cheaper. It's getting more accessible, and the feedback has been really positive so far. The the clients that we work with are really excited about the safety aspects of using drones to do the surveying versus ground crews, for instance. Uh, the low environmental impact, we flew a 550 line kilometer survey 
on 15 gallons of fuel for generators um, using a drone. The, uh, there's also a lot of room for improvement. So despite these advancements, the, the industry is quickly moving ahead and there's new drone technology out almost daily. Uh, you see new platforms and things getting better like sense and avoid technology, endurance and range of the systems and the sensor payloads. Uh, and in terms of the sensor design, we're starting to see more and more UAV-specific payloads being made, uh, both for geophysics, also remote sensing. And the success of these early sensor systems will only continue to drive more and more innovation and bring you know, more UAV-specific technology to the market. So disruptive innovation or disruptive technology sounds like a negative term, but with the case of drones and mining, and exploration. The reasons for the mass adoption of the technology are pretty clear. Uh, drone surveys are reducing the workload, they're increasing the safety for people in the field, and delivering high quality data that in many cases just wasn't possible to even collect before. Uh, we're seeing companies switch from using old equipment for surveying over to drone methods, and these are sort of company-wide changes that are being happening, that are, that are taking place in, in the survey departments, for instance, at operating mines, uh, because the, the benefits are immediate. It's a low-cost uh, option to switch to new technology now. You don't have to invest millions. You can start surveying with the drone for uh, a $5,000 investment, and, and you're shelving your your uh, you know differential GPS units, which cost ten times that amount, and the data uh, is really really high quality, and the the technology is extremely accessible.